Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to be going over how you can turn any object into a light or light source. Now we're not going to be doing GI or anything like that. We're going to be using actual lights in Cinema 4D. Uh, so right here I'm kind of <clears throat> driving home the fact that, you know, carrots do actually help you see better uh, by turning them in, into lights. Because what is there, the vitamin C or whatever that's in it that makes your eyes your eye cones or whatever look see better but yeah that was a terrible joke so let's just go into uh how we can uh use lights in cinema 4d and and or turn an object into a light uh let's break that down so let's break this scene uh down right here where we got some carrots and we're gonna start this and let's actually just let's texture this from the start so uh let's first let's see let's make our body of our carrot texture so this will be the actual carrot uh, and we'll make it a nice little orangey deal here and uh, let's let's actually what I like to do is uh, color things with a for now so what that does if I move this out of the way and if I actually let me cancel this and apply this texture to the body of my carrots here can see that adding that fred for now really adds a nice little shading effect but right now it doesn't look like anything all that great uh, let me turn on interactive render region here as well so we can actually see what's going on and let's get the material editor up here and uh boom all right let's uh let's just choose some different colors other than the for now here uh or than the black and white so we'll do some like light orange and we'll do some like darker orange. There we go. And we'll just invert that. So now we have like a nice kind of shading thing going on. And uh, let's add some reflectance. We got the specular going on here. Let's actually change this to like fong. So we got like a nice sharp uh, kind of specular going on and change this color to like another hue or another shade of orange uh, so that's maybe a little bit too let's make it lighter maybe up the strength a little bit so you just want a nice plasticky kind of specular going on here <clears throat> and that's looking pretty good uh, and what we can do is add a little bit of uh, if we change this to additive, so we're adding the reflection on top of the actual color channel and all that stuff. Uh, let's just add like a slight reflection, uh, you know, maybe, you know, something like uh, that looks good. So just the nice little sheen, plasticky kind of sheen. And then we can also give this a little hue or a little shade of uh, orange. There we go. And we can add some for now. Just so it's not so super shiny maybe turn down the strength of the for now a little bit so we just get a little subtle hint of some uh, reflections we got this nice little reflection highlight there uh, so that's our carrot so basically what we're gonna do is uh, you know do the same kind of thing and just duplicate this and this will be the green the little leafy part of our carrot so let's do the leaf leafy guys rename that and then we're just going to go in here and just change the color i guess it really doesn't mean matter that i'm changing the color in here because i need to change the color in the for now so let's go ahead and let's get a nice nice color of green here maybe some greenish bluish like tealish thing going on here and just remove that knot create a new one and we'll just lighten that up or maybe we can even add a little bit of like yellow green in there so we get this nice so this is like why I like using for now uh, let me actually apply this to the leaves like, like this and if you guys actually want to uh, have me do if you want me to show you how I made the carrot and all that stuff it's really simple but I can maybe do a live cast in the future of making a carrot gonna be boring it's very super simple but if you guys want it let me know let me know in the uh, comments so there are all of my carrot elements shaded actually this is a little bright for me 
uh, little leafy guys. So let's uh, darken this a little bit. Maybe darken this. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. A little bit. Okay, I'm digging that. I'm digging those colors a lot better. Uh, so actually, we have a little bit of that yellowish uh, coming from the uh, the reflection in the specular. So we can change this ever so slightly if we want. Or we can keep this orangey kind of specular and reflection because those actually look actually doesn't look all that bad. So let me so we'll keep it like that. So that those will be our colors. So we have our objects and we have them all textured and stuff like that uh, and looking pretty good nothing too uh, exciting or fancy yet uh, but now we can actually start to uh, like this scene <clears throat> and the first thing we're going to want to do is determine which objects we want to turn in the light so in my original composition I had these uh, two carrots on the left and the right being the light sources and kind of lighting this front carrot. So uh, how, the, how, how, how you can turn objects into lights is very simple. You basically, uh, since we actually want these objects to stay and be visible, we actually need to duplicate our objects uh, and then be able to turn the duplicated uh, objects into lights. So like I said, we need both this the body of this carrot and the body of this carrot. So let me just duplicate this carrot. Uh, and the important thing is that since we have this subdivision surface, for the light to actually be the shape of the light or the shape of the body uh, and not like this, this little chunky thing, we actually need to go ahead and just uh, on this copy, go ahead and uh, do this current state to object. And what that's going to do is give us the subdivided surface smooth version of our carrot uh, and not the chunky version. Uh, and to be able to use, uh, to be able to turn objects in the lights, we need to do this. Uh, because we need actual geometry. It's not going to recognize the, the, smooth, the smoothness added by the uh, subdivision surface. So... Another current state object, and now we got our copies. So let's go ahead, and this will be the light, light source, and this will be light source two. Uh, so now we can actually bring lights into the scene and turn these into lights. And the way we turn geometry uh, or objects into a light source is by using an area light. Now I'm going to make this a child of my first carrot. So this is carrot two over on the left. Uh, and area lights specifically have this option in the details tab called area shape. Now if I turn off interactive render region here, we can see that the area shape is this rectangle. And we all are familiar with this rectangle and we usually don't change this at all, right? Uh, but if you wanted to, you could change it into a disc and just basically change the shape of your area light. But another option what, uh, that is gonna be key to what we're doing here is this object slash spline option. Now what this allows you to do is drag any object, any uh, uh, made editable object. So you can't use parametrics in here. So you can't just you know, create a, a cube and drop it in there. You actually need to make the cube editable and then you can use the cube as your light source. Uh, so what we can do is use this caret light source, drag it into this object field. And we can use splines as well, which is really cool. Uh, and so let's see, our light source is right here. So you see that even though uh, our, our left caret's not being lit, it's actually emitting light. So if I actually turn off the original uh, body caret, carrot body and just go ahead and in this light source you can see that it's showing up in my specular but it's not showing up in the reflection remember we have a little bit of reflection going on and that's because we we have the show in reflection uh, turned off so we turn that on and you can now see that glow uh, and right now the color is white so let's actually change this more to like an orangish 
kind of hue or something like that. And now you can see that, okay, now it's kind of has this cool orangish hue. Let's go back into the details. And uh, what we can do is, uh, well, we need to actually see our carrot. We need to see our main carrot. And right now, if I turn it on, uh, because the light source geometry right here, and you can actually you can't actually see that either. So let me go in here, and I can actually show the object in the render. You can see that we have this flat, luminant uh, carrot body. So let's let's undo that. Make sure it's back in the same position as our first carrot. So our, there's our light source. So since it's overlapping the original geometry. What we need to do is actually turn, uh, just scale it down ever so slightly so they're not taking up, so the polygons aren't just right on top of each other, the first, the original carrot and the light source. Uh, let's go back in interactive render region. So we have the light source, but we're not seeing it through the uh, piece of geometry here, and that's because we, we, don't, we can't see through this geometry. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is make a duplicate of our texture on our main carrot body and this will just be the uh, carrot light texture and what we can do is just go into uh, the field here and turn on transparency and now what you'll be able to do is if I turn on this show and render there we go uh, oh, and I actually need to apply that texture so that I'm applying that transparent texture. So now we can see through and see that light source underneath. So we're getting close. So let's keep tweaking this reflection channel. So what I want to do is uh, let's go into the transparency and just adjust this ever so slightly. So let's bring this down to say like 35 so we can still see the light source, but we're getting back some more of the original... Uh, body texture, the uh, the original carrot geometry, uh, and let's go and change the the color of the the absorption color here to something more colorful. We kind of brighten that up a little bit. Uh, let's turn this. Uh, let's give a little bit of refraction, maybe like one point three five, something like that. And let's actually let's brighten up our light here. So we can do one of two things. We can uh, we can go in here and crank up the intensity and that's looking pretty hot. That's a hot light. That's a hot light right there. Uh, so what we can actually do is just, let's bring this down to like 250 uh, and we can actually control this uh, light source, this object light, uh, like any other light and we can add a fall off. Uh, now sometimes uh, with reflecting things and, and casting lights onto other uh, objects. So let me bring in a disc here so we can actually have a floor. Let's crank up the radius here. So you can see how much faster this, this is rendering versus a uh, GI or anything like that. So this is kind of, you know, you can have a lot of fun with uh, using objects as lights and kind of replacing the need for for GI. So right now I'm just creating a, a dark material for our floor with just a little bit of specular. And let's apply this floor object. There's my disk. This is just our floor here. So just that so just so we have a little bit of light casting onto our floor. Make sure our, our disk is centered. And bring this up ever so slightly. There we go. So now we have some light being cast onto our floor. Uh, and another important, um, important part of lights is we have these samples. Sometimes if the sample's too low, uh, you can have a little bit of issues as far as sampling because basically what, uh, what you're doing with uh, choosing an object as the light source is you're basically cloning a bunch of little lights uh, as the uh, to create the light. So you're kind of cloning tiny lights on the surface of your uh, geometry light source. So if you if you're seeing actual lights like little 
splotchy glows and stuff pop up, looks like little glow bugs or something, uh, it's because your samples are too low. And we're not having that issue uh, in this composition yet, but just keep that in mind. If you do have that issue, you can crank this all the way up to a thousand if you want to. Uh, and it'll slow down your render, but it'll be much more of an accurate kind of uh, light. So let's just leave this at like 55. That's fine. Um, so let's let's keep playing around with our our carrot light uh, transparency and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and for the for now, let's just add a very whoops. It's a gradient. Let's do a for now here. And let's just, uh, so this is going to add a little bit more edge uh, to our light. Uh, so what I want to do is actually invert this. I want the darker part out here so we get a little bit of a glow effect. And I'm going to change this color from black to like a very, very hot kind of orangish thing going on. So now you can see we have this hot orange bit. Maybe that's a little too hot there. Uh, and let's go in here and let's make this additive and really make this glowy. Uh, and right now I want to bring more of the reflection uh, back into this. So what I can do is go into the reflectance. Let's add more uh, reflect, uh, refre can't talk, uh, reflection strength onto this because I want to see a little bit more reflection. And speaking of reflection, we actually can't see a lot of reflection because we don't have any we don't have too much in our scene to reflect right now, so let's go ahead and bring in a uh, our fancy HDR studio, and let's turn. So now we got a lot more stuff to reflect. We can actually see some reflection happening in our light. So let's go ahead and turn off the floor, and we can use the background. Uh, let's just change this to like a very dark orange for the gradient background, and just make this black. Uh, and then bring this knot over here. So just something subtle, just a subtle little glow. And we can see that our our uh, floor is a little bit too big. There we go. This is kind of nice. Uh, so again, we right now our lights kind of the uh, the light fall off is just not non-existent. The lights just going for forever. So what we can do, just like with actual lights, is change this fall off to something uh, more physically accurate if we want, and then we can adjust. You can actually see the light uh, that we're using and bring down the decay if we want here. We can do something like, uh, you know, and sometimes this inverse square will, will give you some issues. So right now we have some like hot splotches right here. Uh, and if I turn off the glow, uh, you can see that we have these hot spots. So what I like to do and what I've what I use for this composition, and I'll use the inverse square clamped, and that will get rid of those really hot uh, highlights there. So just keep that in mind. You can play around with a lot of these different fall offs uh, with this this object light source. So that's looking good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 250 looks pretty good. We can maybe darken this a little bit. Change the glow. Because right now that glow is a little hot. I can bring this down and we can get more of these this edge in here. So we got a little bit more orange on this edges on the the edges of the original uh, carrot body. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, making this about like a dark tannish kind of thing. And then we can always go back into our light and kind of crank that up. Or crank this up just a little bit. Or we can actually go into our uh, see-through carrot uh, material and maybe make this more see-through to bring more of that light from our object light to come through a little bit more to get a little bit of that. Let's just maybe let's just stick with 60. Uh, let's go into our for now and actually let's get rid of for now for the shiny lights so we can make them really super shiny super shiny lights if we want to maybe bring this down a little bit and maybe make the color 
a little more peachy. Actually, you know what? I don't like it peachy. I liked it before. We got this nice white uh, reflection. So just changing the color of the reflection. I'm having trouble saying reflection today, guys. Uh, so let's uh, so let's maybe make this a little bit more orangish with the specular. Right now, we're really not seeing much of a difference. So actually, that, this looks pretty dang good. So uh, now all we got to do is do the exact same thing to the right carrot over here. So here's our carrot. So we're just going to go through uh, and use this light source. Let's actually just duplicate this area light, bring it down into here, and use this light source dos, light source two. Uh, and you can see that this is what's happening is because we have the main body and the duplicate right on top of it. So all the polygons are kind of right on top of each other. We're having this weird jankiness going on with the uh, polygons intersecting. So again, just going to slightly scale down this light source. Uh, and again, we need to actually see through to that light source. So we're going to throw that uh, uh, transparent material on top of the original uh, geometry and now we can see that light source coming through. So now our main front carrot is being lit by these two back carrots. So again we can go in here and really brighten this up if we want to. We get a lot more light happening and this looks really glowy now. It's really out of control. Uh, but this is really cool, uh, using objects as a light source. And again, you can see how fast all of this is rendering in my viewport here. That if you if you were going to do this uh, with GI, oh my goodness, it would take so dang long. So let's go in here. I'm just going to change, uh, maybe add some, let's see, hopefully this doesn't screw stuff up. But add a little bit of reflection to the ground. Let's get some... Brunel here, bring down the reflection strength a little bit, and we're seeing a little bit of the uh, the uh, HDR rig in here. Let's actually open up the HDR rig and choose like a little, uh, nah, maybe not that, maybe this bevel reflection, maybe, and let's just bring the brightness down and maybe blur texture so we just want a subtle thing going on that looks that looks mucho better heck yeah okay let's maybe bring this down to 50 50 that looks really good and maybe let's go back into our floor material and maybe uh maybe just no reflection whatsoever and we can adjust the specular though so let's go in here so we can get a little bit more of that color or that glow on the floor. See what that looks like. That looks pretty good. That looks a lot better. And we can change this color to, you know, orange. There we go. That's looking much better. Pumping some color into the specular. Very cool. All right, and you can even see the glow from the floor kind of bouncing up onto that carrot on the bottom of the front carrot there. Nice effect. And again, look at how fast this this is going, how fast this is moving and grooving without, uh, without GI or anything like that. Forget you, GI. We found a new cool thing. So cool. So... Uh, on top of that, uh, again, you can actually use splines, and it's the same thing where uh, when you use a spline as a light source, let's actually let's do something more fun than a circle, right? Let's do uh, let's do a helix, and we'll scale this up. Let's get out of interactive render region, and let's just you know just for example of using a spline as a light source, let's do something like this, and Maybe bring the end angle down. Uh, something like that. That works. That works. Let's uh, bring down the end radius a little bit here. So let's use uh, this helix as a light. 
So let's go and create a new area light. And again, go to the details, change this to object spline, drag and drop in there. And helixes, you can actually keep them parametric. Uh, and let's see what this looks like. We got this helix as a light source. Let's, uh, let's turn off the lights of our carrots for now. So now we're just lighting with our helix. Let's go ahead and change. Uh, let's enable a fall off here. So let's do inverse square. Crank up the intensity. Whoa, whoa, that's a lot. Bring down the radius of the decay. Something like that, maybe. Now you can see this hot, bright spot. Go my above view here. Uh, bring down the radius even more. So right now you're seeing that you're only seeing one bright spot here, and we're running into that issue of the samples. So remember, Basically what's happening is this single light is being duplicated or cloned along this helix. So if you don't have enough samples, you're going to see a bright spot somewhere and some other places, but it's not going to be continuous. So we crank up the samples. We should see a lot more light happening on here. Rotate this a little bit. All right, so there we go. Now we're seeing a lot more lights. And let's actually turn this carrot texture. Uh, let's make it darker just so we can see the light a little bit more. We need to bring this down. Maybe make a sharper, sharper specular so you can really get a sense of that light. There we can see right there, there's our little helix light. Change the color of this to like an orange. And there you go. Now we really got this orangey thing going on. And we can adjust the radius a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. So we're lighting this whole entire scene with this helix. So another cool thing you can do is, you know, make ring lights uh, with like a torus. So let's just make this torus editable. Use this instead, and where's our ring light? Where's our torus? There it is. Bring this torus over here. Ring lights are really cool. Let's bring this over here like this. And we'll crank up uh, the radius of decay and that's pretty good right there. So now we have a ring light over here. So again, uh, what I forgot to do is to show in the reflection. So always make sure that you got that so we can see it in the specular, but we need to manually add that in the reflection. So now you can see that really cool ring uh, from our Taurus ring light there. So that's a little hot. <laughs> Showing up pretty hot there. And let's increase the radius here of our Taurus. Move this up a little bit. So we got this cool ring light going on. I actually really like ring lights a lot. They have this little really cool effect. Let's actually make this ring light like head on. Let's uh, zero everything out. Let's uh, move this. back and rotate this up. So we're just going to have a ring light right in the front. That looks pretty cool. We can have a ring light on this side and we'll just duplicate both these things, both the light and the torus and make sure we have this second torus as the light source and just move the torus over here. We can have double ring light. Make sure we have the radius up. So it's actually lighting both these sides. Then we got like a double 
ring light thing going on. It looks pretty cool. We need to crank up the radius a little bit more so everything's lit. But hopefully this gives you uh, some ideas to, you know, use objects as lights from here on out. Uh, and, and kind of don't always assume that you need to do GI because think of how much work goes into setting up your scene for GI because it always depends on the luminance values in each of your textures. So this way, uh, you know, if I just want two objects as, um, you know, my light sources, you know, all I do is, you know, just throw a light in here, choose my light source as that geometry. Turn these guys on again. And again, look at how fast this renders. You know, how long would this take to just render a still? You sure as heck wouldn't be doing the interac interactive render region with GI. Uh, but for simple, quick things like this, I mean, just get out of here, GI. You take way too long. Uh, as I'm getting the beach ball of death there for a second. Uh, but yeah, so lights or objects as lights, super fun. Uh, just again, remember that if you're having issues with uh, little splotches and stuff showing up to change the samples, like maybe crank up the samples a little bit more to, uh, to fix that. Uh, and another thing that you can do is if you have specular uh, that's too sharp on your objects, sometimes that also will call, cause those issues of little glow bugs, you know, kind of popping up in your scene. But actually this... This scene works out pretty good. We haven't run into the, any issues. And again, super fast render, super, super fast render. So you can actually render this out in After Effects and maybe uh, render out uh, the light pass. So the light passes, I believe, render out um, as atmosphere passes. Let's actually give this a go. Uh, so if we wanted to render out those lights, and you know apply a glow to them in after effects let's go ahead and render this out see what this looks like again we can throw we can throw on some fancy ambient occlusion here too if we wanted to make that much more make that much these carrots that much more sexy and we'll render this to picture viewer again this is rendering pretty dang fast i have my filter going so let's turn that off Let's see, is this the atmosphere? Okay, so it's not the atmosphere pass. I was wrong. Maybe it is the, let's see. Maybe it's the ambient. Let's just try a bunch of these. I forget which one it was. Uh, post, I don't think it's post effects, but we'll try that too. Let's see, let's render this again. Make sure we're just rendering a frame. Yep, render. What might be causing the issue is the texture we have in front. It might be totally covering up our light. Yeah, I think you would just need to do a separate pass altogether without the uh, see-through texture, and boom, there we go. So now we actually have those two objects and we can just add a, use this mat as an object uh, buffer and this is a lot easier with the take system if you're familiar with the take system that you don't have to actually do that you can just make a take uh, without those textures and not screw up your main composition but there you go that's that would be how you would get the glow as a separate pass with your little carrots all right so that's how you make some glowy carrots some uh, carrot lights in Cinema 4D, how you use uh, objects as lights and getting rid of GI, making really fast renders here. Let me put this, these materials back on. Uh, so hopefully you guys learn something useful here. Let's turn on these light sources again, get our glow. Uh, Again, you're not just limited to objects, you can do splines, so just like I showed you with the ring lights or the, the, the little helix lights, you can have a lot of fun with uh, objects as lights and splines as lights and, and getting around, having to wait for forever for global illumination and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys got some ideas cranking of uh, what you guys can make, and I'd love to see what you do, so be sure to share it with me on Twitter and all the, all the Instagrams and all the crazy stuff the kids are into these days. 
Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial, be sure to leave them in the comments section. Uh, and that's it for me, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.